Hello everyone, myself Aditi Chaturvedi. I am a student of Forensic Science in APG Shimla University. This is my presentation on nature and scope of Forensic Science. Forensic Science is the application of the methods and techniques of the basic sciences to legal issues. As you can imagine, Forensic Science is a very broad field of study. Crime laboratory scientists sometimes call Forensic Scientists or more properly criminalists work with physical evidence collected at scenes of crimes. The scope of forensic science study is vast. You can get jobs in various government and private sectors. The study will improve your skills and knowledge. After completing your degree, you can open your own forensic practices and forensic service offices. You also may employ in forensic laboratories, directive offices, banks and other government and private agencies. Now we'll talk about criminalistics. Criminalistic is one subdivision of forensic sciences. As an integral part of the forensic sciences, criminalistic encompasses the broadest variety of disciplines. These commonly include the examinations of tool marks, firearms, fingerprints, shoe prints, tire tracks, soil, fibers, glass, paint, serial numbers, light bulbs, drug of abuse, question documents, fire and explosion, biological fluids, and last but not least, crime scenes. Criminalistic also typically includes physical evidence that is not directly studied by another field of forensic sciences. The main goal of criminalistic is to apply the principles of sciences to the examination of evidence in order to help the justice system determine that a crime has been committed, to identify its victims and perpetrators, and finally determine the method of operation. Next is Forensic Anthropology. Forensic Anthropology is a special subfield of Physical Anthropology, the study of human remains. That involves applying skeletal analysis and techniques in archaeology to solving criminal cases when human remains or a suspected burial are found. Forensic Anthropologists are called upon to gather information from the bones and their recovery context to determine who died, how they died and how long ago they died. Forensic Anthropologists specialize in analyzing heart tissues such as bones. They can potentially determine a person's age, sex, stature and ancestry with their training in archaeology. They are also knowledgeable about excavating buried remains and meticulously recording the evidence. Next is Forensic Odontology. Forensic dentistry or forensic odontology is the application of dental knowledge to those criminal and civil laws that are enforced by police agencies in a criminal justice system. Forensic odontologists are typically called in to identify human remains that cannot be identified using face recognition, fingerprints or other means identify bodies in mass fatalities such as plane crashes and natural disasters determine the source of bite marks injuries in cases of assault or suspected abuse. They may also assist in determining age, race, previous dental history, proper handling, examination and evaluation of dental evidence using dental records including radiography, anti-mortem and post-mortem photographs and DNA. Next is Forensic Medicine. Forensic Medicine is the branch of medicine dealing with the application of medical knowledge to establish facts in civil or criminal legal cases, such as an investigation into the cause and time of a suspicious death, also known as forensic pathology. Forensic pathologist is someone who investigates the cause of sudden and unexpected death and can provide evidence in court regarding the cause and time of such deaths. A forensic pathologist are able to determine how a person died by performing autopsies and studying tissues and laboratory results. A sudden and unexpected death may occur at home, in a hospital, in prison, or in police custody and may be an accident, suicide, murder, or due to natural causes. Next is Forensic Toxicology. Forensic Toxicology is defined as the determination of drug use, poisoning, or exposure to toxic substances as part of a legal investigation. The most common sample types used by forensic toxicologists are blood, urine and hair as these can be easily collected in a non-invasive manner and provide a great deal of information regarding both the historical and present influence of various substances. Toxicologists perform qualitative and quantitative analysis of the poisonous products present in the viscera. Next is fingerprint analysis. 
A fingerprint is an impression left by the friction ridges of a human finger. Fingerprints can be found on practically any solid surface, including the human body. Analysts classify fingerprints into three categories. According to the type of surface on which they are found and whether they are visible or not, fingerprints on soft surfaces such as soap, wax, wet paint, fresh chalk, etc. are likely to be three-dimensional plastic prints. Those on hard surfaces are either patent, visible or latent invisible prints. Visible prints are formed when blood, dirt, ink, paint, etc. is transferred from a finger or thumb to a surface. Patent prints can be found on a wide variety of surfaces, smooth or rough, porous such as paper, cloth or wood, or non-porous such as metal, glass or plastic. Latent prints are formed when the body's natural oils and sweat on the skin are deposited onto another surface. Latent prints can be found on a variety of surfaces. However, they are not readily visible and detection often requires the use of fingerprint powders, chemical reagents or alternate light sources. Generally speaking, the smoother and less porous a surface is, the greater the potential that any latent prints present can be found and develop. Now, We'll talk about how fingerprints are collected. Patent prints are collected using a fairly straightforward method, photography. These prints are photographed in high resolution with the forensic measurement scale in the image of reference. Investigators can improve the quality of the images by using low angle or alternate light sources and or certain chemicals or dyes during photography. But this is usually not necessary and for collecting latent fingerprints is by dusting a smooth or non-porous surface with fingerprint powder, black granular, aluminum flake, black magnetic, etc. And if any, any prints appear, they are photographed and then lifted from the surface with clear adhesive tape. The lifting tape is then placed on a latent lift card to preserve the print. Next is question document. Question document examination is a branch of forensic science that deals with documents having a suspicious authenticity, also called as forensic document examination. It involves the application of scientific methods and principle for document examination. This helps to produce evidence about a question document that is admissible in the court of law to prove its legitimacy. There are many types of question documents that are examined by document examiners such as checks, this, licenses, suicide notes, etc. Last topic is function of forensic science. Science laboratory, the main function of forensic science is science laboratory, is to provide an unbiased scientific report to the investigating agencies and thus help the judiciary system recognize the physical evidences, document the crime scene and evidences to collect of preserve and prepare inventory of evidences, packaging of evidences properly depending upon the type of evidence along with the list of queries, transport evidences to the laboratory to analyze and to evaluate the physical evidences. I have prepared a case study on the Zisha murder case. The Zisha murder case was a rape and murder crime that shook the Indian state of Kerala during April 2016. Zisha a 29-year-old law student found murdered on 28 April 2016 at her home near a canal in Pirumbavur in Ernakulam. She was found dead at her house on 28 April 8.30 pm by her mother Rajeshwari. She was living with, with her mother who works as a casual laborer. The police found the body mutilated and disturbingly sliced injuries showed violence, possible torture. The Zisha murder case came through a breakthrough. The citizen hailing from Assam informed his doubts about a worker he knew to the Kerala police. Following the lead, they picked up the Assamese laborer and learned that 24-year-old Amir ul Islam was the culprit and was arrested from Kanchipuram in Tamil Nadu. The Ernakulam Principal District and Sessions Court in December 2017 awarded death penalty to Amir ul Islam, the sole accused in the case. He was also awarded life term and Rigorously, imprisonment of 10 and 7 years. The crime took place in the backdrop of 
Kerala legislative elections and hence gained momentum and focus from political parties. As a woman brutally murdered in her home in Perumbavur, justice for Zisha was the hashtag, hashtag justice for Zisha used in the social media. The government has declared to offer a financial cons consolation of a peace 10 lakh to the family of Zisha and home will be provided for her parents. Also, many artists and humanitarians pledged support to the case. The role of forensic in this case was forensic concluded the body injury showed violence, possible torture and presence of alcohol culprit that used a sharp weapon to disemboll her. Sisha was stabbed over 30 times. Her chest was pierced with a dagger. The alcoholic assailant observed Sisha's routine and waited to sexually assault her. In that effort and rage, he killed her and when she asked for water moments before death, he gave her alcohol that he had with him. DNA test conducted, matched and the police also recovered the knife used by the perpetrator and postmortem states that severe infliction on the neck led to her death according to forensic officials. Samples of blood and saliva recovered have been sent for examination and DNA is recorded for matching. Preliminary investigation revealed that Zisha would have been murdered when she resisted the rape attempt DNA test conducted, matched, and the police also recovered the knife used by the perpetrator. Thank you so much.